Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Pete Man Reviews. Today we have the Generation 1 Transformer, Scorponok. Uh, as you can see, Scorponok is a huge Transformer. Um, he was the biggest Decepticon released and until the release of Fortress Maximus, which was at the same time, um, the tallest of them all. Fortress Maximus absolutely dwarfed um, Scorponok, which was a shame really. When you consider the size of Scorponok, um, it kind of made no sense to them make an Autobot that was <laughs> so much larger than him. We'll do the size comparison now because Scorponok is a triple changer, so there are other modes to show you. So, this is Perceptor, uh, one of the larger Autobots of the time, um, and still, as you can see, Perceptor is absolutely dwarfed by the size of him. See, so he can quite happily fit there, and you're not even beginning to be halfway. Well, you may be about halfway. Now, I don't have the Generation 1 release of Fortress Maximus, because uh, it's for sale for stupid money, and frankly, it's quite a big lump of plastic. However, what I do have is the Titan's Return release of Metroplex, which is only slightly taller than Fortress Maximus. Now, as a size comparison, you just see just how much larger he is. Um, so much so that actually there's no way of showing it without the light getting in the way and all of that, but he's just so much larger, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, I'll, what we'll just do, if we just bring this up. So, in terms of actual size, Scorponok is about half the size of Metroplex. Uh, and Metroplex is only slightly taller than Fortress Maximus. So, that just gives you some idea of what scale we're talking about. So, it was just a crazy size release for Fortress Maximus. They didn't need to make it that big. The release of Scorponok by himself is more than sufficient in size. We'll just focus the camera back now and go a bit more to a, to a normal size here. Okay, so, Scorponok. Um, he obviously was meant as a leader, uh, and he's a very big transformer that comes with it. He has an awful lot of kibble, which you can't use in all his parts. So these, you won't be able to see that. That's all the kibble you've got left over from the base. Now, the only bits that I'm missing are from Fast Track, which are his... Arms and his guns, because frankly, each piece sells for about 20 quid on eBay. And you're thinking, what is the point? You spend, you'd be looking at spending 80 quid, 80 quid on a pair of arms and a pair of guns, which are tiny. It's just not worth the money. It really isn't. You could buy Scorponok probably twice for that money. Certainly at least once and get a pretty decent version of him that you pay for getting arms and guns on here. So... It's just not worth it. Don't bother buying it. Just don't bother getting the arms. It really isn't worth it. All the other bits, radar dishes, the little wheat arms and the thing there. Nice to have. Um, very nice to have. Not necessarily. Not necessary though. You've got the base, base character there, so don't pay over the odds. These are the bits that cost the money. All these little accessories that you can get. Things like the shield, the guns, Scorponok never had a gun <laughs> that I remember, but hey, the robot comes with a gun. Uh, and these turrets you see here, uh, or not, if the camera's not quite up enough. So these turrets, they're all worth getting. And of course, Zarak are all worth getting. All the bits down here, if you can get them for a reasonable price, yes, but otherwise just don't bother. It's just not worth spending. You could be looking at £100 worth of stuff down here. And in no way is this £100 quid's worth, but that's how much it's probably going to cost you to get. At least, it's just not worth not worth spending the money on it. Right, so after that little rant, <laughs> let's go back to our, our Scorponok. So, in terms of robot mode, it's it is very very big. Big, not it's not too bad details, but it, it is very obvious that it is big hunks of plastic that are put in place. So, he's got the normal headmaster flat down slat there, which then tells you what the speed is. So speed is virtually zero. Strength, surprisingly, isn't maxed out, and intelligence is reasonably high, um, which is slightly already considering the size of it. You'd think the strength would be huge, but never mind. Uh, it's also a place you can store Zarak too. Otherwise, it is a lot of it is moulded plastic. Um, there are ridges on him. It's not huge amounts of detail, I have to say. Uh, it's predominantly very ridge-based. 
The claws are good, they actually will hold an Autobot, a smaller Autobot. Um, so they work very well. Um, I suppose um, we should probably just demonstrate this, shouldn't we? So I'm just going to take away the gun, because frankly it gets in the way. So if we take our Combiner Wars Warpath, as you can see, it will very happily hold him in the claw, um, fairly securely as well, to give, give a nice little bit of um, play acting, as it were, with your with your toys. You actually can hold; it will hold quite comfortably at an order one. The claw will snap shut enough to enable that to happen. So that's quite a nice little touch on there. Um, otherwise, say it, it's big. Its biggest point, <laughs> literally, is that it's big. Okay, so let's see, what mode shall we go for now? What mode would you like to see? Scorpion mode? I think we'll go for Scorpion mode. So Scorpion mo mode is actually considered the default mode for Scorpion Ock. When you first game in the box, it comes in Scorpion mode. And strangely enough, in the Japanese cartoon, they feel that Scorpion mode is the way he travels through space. A bit odd, but never mind. So, begin with Move Shield. You don't need that. So, we'll leave Zarek in there, he doesn't have to stay in, but we'll leave him in there to begin with. So you want to, he basically is the opposite direction to how you see him now. What the heck was that? That was a gun that came off. Lovely. Let's just pop that down there and pick the gun up off the floor. Gun there. So we'll take that off and while we're at it we'll take away this gun as well because we don't really want our pieces of scorpion off to go flying. Okay, so feet, you just move like that, get them out of the way. These will all rotate up, like so, um, to form the base of our, our scorpion, which allows the tail to then rotate in position at the back like that. Um, the stinger will then also come out as well. I kind of feel that I want to rotate that more, but no, that is right. Um, the arms, you go all the way up to the front here, so they're little ratchets, as you can see, and you, they come all the way up the front. And then you want to, you need to be able to hook all the legs up, like that, so that they're not, instead of hanging down, they're up. Because that way, when he runs along the ground, it's got a little motor so it looks like the scorpion the legs are moving. Um, it's just a shame that they don't splay out any further. Okay, that is... Hmm. I'm looking at this and I'm just thinking... Hmm. It's been a while since I transformed it into scorpion mode. Um, yes, that is correct. I was going to say, because it, it looks weird like that, but I forgot the guns then go back on. So it's, it's not weird. The arms are, are the wrong way up. Well, they're the right way up. They're just the opposite way to the robot because that's where the guns go. Now, strictly speaking, Zarek shouldn't be in there anymore because it's a headmaster. So you take Zarek out. We'll transform him while we're here. It's a very, very simple transformation. That is basically it. And the idea is Zarek can sit in here and command him. And that's meant to be a weak point, point as well, which is where Zarek sits. I don't know why you'd have that, but you can. Uh, and then, of course, you just rotate these guns around here. Okay, so Scorpion mode of Scorpionock. It's huge. It really is huge. You can see it barely fits in the camera shot. Um, and it does trundle along on wheels, but it has a really nice movement on the legs to make it look like he's actually the legs are moving. So that's a really, really good thing. And as far as I'm aware, Scorpionock's pretty much the only time that this appears. Um, which I feel is a little bit of a, of a shame, uh, as that would be excellent to see on some other ones like that. Um, by the way, I'm pretty sure with the tail, what I forgot to do is that slot goes into there. There is one on the other side, unfortunately, it snapped off before when I purchased it. As in, I didn't snap it off, it was like that when I got it. Honest God. Um, and that just slots into both the tail. So there you are, you have a very, very large scorpion. Mode there. It looks good though. Um, we just take Zarek away because I think that looks stupid with that up. It does look pretty good. It's quite. Again, there's a lot of plastic involved there. Um, 
a lot of plastic. However, the detailing kind of works a bit better um, than it did on the robot mode because I suppose it's a bit, some of it feels a bit more condensed and then you've got the arms which really give give the bulk. If you, if you didn't have the arms and you didn't have the tail, it's a little bit more condensed so there's, it feels a little bit more detailed. Okay, so what we'll now do is we'll transform him from scorpion mode into base mode so you can see that mode that no one else has ever seen. Um, there's a lot of kibble to add on to it, so um, there's lots of bits that will suddenly appear on, from off screen uh, so you can see. Now I'm just going to begin by removing the guns, like so. I'm going to remove these little tower parts here as well so they do just snap on uh, just to get them out of the way and finally you see you've got little ramps on here we'll, we'll leave the ramps on there um, but it's just removing some of the, the extraneous parts okay so to begin with um, having now put this on this comes off again this is forming the front of your city so it's basically a ramp for the, um, your little guy to what's it called fast track to, to run down Okay, so what we now need to do is to move the legs. Um, these form the, they call them repair platforms. So they come out like that, comes out like that. It does rotate up um, around like so, and then rotate up again. So you've now got the orange part on top, which is where these ramps then appear and fold down. You've got grey in here, which appears as well and comes down right on this side which comes down too and this will then go up like that the scorpion bit goes in and that produces your ramp it's quite a tight ratchet but it does work okay so scorpion bits pop up pop up these are your bases of your towers move the whole lot back so what you've got at the front is you've got at the back rather you've got the the chest of scorpionock and you've got all the um the legs which aren't used at all for base mode so these parts here that we took off now stick onto these holes here uh, and these give the impression now that the claws are not claws they're actually towers um like so and it, to be fair, it's a reasonably convincing impression too. Our tower shield, as they call it in the instructions, or Zarak shield, for those of you who've seen Headmasters, flips in half, so you've got base like that. Uh, this will now attach uh, onto our, our, our thing. So flip the chest up and round, because this sits quite nicely, um, he says. You have to get it the right way around over that gap there to produce the tower shield. This is a base, so you need that to stay there because it forms a, a special ramp to make fast track go down. So that's why that, that goes there. I feel I put that tower shield the wrong way up. No, it was right up. You'd think the sticker would be this side. Oh, um, never mind. There we are. It is that way. You'd think it would be the other way, but never mind. Um, looks a bit reminiscent of Unicron with those bits like that, doesn't it? Now, radar dishes. So, you've got four of these in total. Um, again, these are they're the kind of things which also get lost a little bit as well. So, what you do with the radar dishes, let's say you've got four of them. Um, it's kind of up to you where they go. However, the suggested method is to put that one there. Uh, we then need one that looks a bit like a cross, that one, which sticks uh, in there. Uh, the one, actually the, the hammer one, which is this one, should I think go there. So that's our, no, the hammer one which is right there. Um, it's kind of got a TV, but it is, it's meant to hammer one. Uh, so our other cross shaped one, that one goes in there. And then you've got one more left, which I say it's a radar, this looks a bit more like a weapon system to me, uh, and that sits in there. Uh, there are two other little compartments which I forgot to flip up. 
up there, we've just got what look like concussion missiles in. Uh, here we are, if we zoom in a bit. There we are, look a bit like concussion missiles in there. And then this also flips up as well with exactly the same appearance on the other side. Yeah, a little bit like concussion missiles in there. Okay, so there's still more bits to add. So we've got a little service ramp here. Now the service ramp, so you've got two plugs in there which actually slot into here. So the idea is it can go down and it can actually go up like that. You've then got repair arms here. So it actually implies that Scorpionock is, is more of a service station and repair station than he is a base. Slightly odd given the, the size of it, but I suppose it's set because it needs to be repaired the same as anybody else. And finally our gun. It actually splits into two parts for this. So you've got the, the actual weapon and the, the, sh the gun shield, as it were, um, becomes a, another part. These flip on the back somewhere. I say somewhere because it's not immediately obvious. In fact, I would go so far as to say it's not obvious at all. The shield should also, should also flip in the back, like that, and the gun flips like that. The idea is, it's meant, it's, they call it now an anti-gravity gun, though I think they're meant to be more towers again, um, because I'm not sure why you want a gun that just points straight up. So one thing that is quite obvious with, with Scorpionock as a base is his lack of armament, because four guns that he took off, here we are, these four, there's no home for them. There are four of them. <laughs> you can't necessarily see them all. He is very much, now he's got no defences. Well, I say armless. He, he of course has these concussion missiles here. But otherwise, he's, he's, he's very much taken on the guise of a repair base. Now, fast track. When you do transform, you just flip it up like that. Flip it down like that, and that's it. It's a very simple, very basic transformation. It's pretty rubbish, to be honest. Um, the arms would be grey with orange um, weapons, again, you know, it's good money that frankly you've got to spend on other things, better, better transformers you can spend your money on. Um, however, Fast Track really is meant to stay in this mode more, um, because the idea is he sits there and then there's a little cell that you pop, actually it helps not to hold on to a, a, a base with it, so you, you pop the cell that bit forward, it just raises a little ramp there, you just see it come up, that's enough to send him flying down. He will happily fit on there and he'll just about fit on there too. Now depending on what else you have, so remember we had Titan's Return Metroplex, he comes with a little guy as well um, and he will quite happily interact here as will the other legends. He's a little bit wide for the ramp but he'll quite happily interact with the other bits as well. So it does work with other legends and figures as well. It, it is the same scale, and of course it'll work with micromasters as well, and and even some of the mini bots as well. So if we take old Braun here, he he quite happily fits uh, as well. I know he's he's the Autobot, so why would just to repair him? Fortunately, there aren't really any mini cons. I know you can have the cassettes, but it's given that it's meant to interact more with cars. There's not very many. What um, Decepticons that ever were released with cars. So again, it's a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Until the MicroMasters came out, um, there are actually very few Decepticon cars out there. Never mind. I have to say, in base mode, it is quite impressive. Um, you can have Zarek standing around. But it is actually quite an impressive looking base. Um, I know it, I say, it's lacking somewhat in weaponry, but it's got lots, all the little parts that you have that come with him now have a slot except for the guns you're always left with the kibble I suppose you probably you could attach some at the back there so that you don't lose them but they won't fit under the legs because then it will unbalance them so you're always going to have at least two guns where there's just nowhere to put them so you'll always have loose kibble this mode has the least of the loose kibble lying around it has to be said it does take up the most amount of, of stuff um, so if, if you're happy to stick the guns on the arms, you're only left with just two left over, so you're less likely to lose lose bits. But there is no one mode of Scorpionock where you can fit everything on him. Scorpion mode has the least stuff that you can fit in, um, and then after that it is robot mode. 
all in all, it's a great toy, big. Um, I do feel perhaps the base mode works the best because while it's got, it is a big hunk of plastic, it's got the most detailing on it. So you've got the little missiles here. Um, you've got some detailing in them. You know, I'm going to just go handheld here for a second. So you've got the most detailing, um, as you can see on the on the concussion missiles, you've actually got some textures um, onto on the on the scales here. You've got some textures on, on that. Uh, you've even got textures on this part, and you don't really get any of that in the other modes. It's just base plastic, a big hunk of plastic. Uh, so here you actually get some textures, which makes all the difference in terms of of believability. So I think his best mode probably is actually the base mode, the one that you see the least. Scorpion mode's good. Um, it's very big, and I do like the runners on it. And robot mode is, is big as well, and it's particularly effective in that the claws are strong enough to clip in place and snap up some of the smaller Autobots, um, or Decepticons, um, so you can interact more with them. It is a good robot. This flaw with Scorpionock is all the kibble, because these are the stuff that get lost, and they will cost you hundreds of pounds to buy them all. So you, you'd be better off shelling out a bit more money to get a more complete version of Scorpionock uh, than buying all the kibble. Because you could be looking at 10 quid for a radar dish. You know, 10 quid for one of these arms. 20 quid for one of his, each of his little components. It's just ludicrous amounts of money. But if you do want a complete one, I'm not sure what your options are. I would personally recommend hanging, holding out for a, a complete version of Scorpionock now. But you're still looking at the thick end of £100 which is obscene sums of money. Um, in terms of versions of Scorpionock that are out there, I do think the G1 mode is by far the best. I'm a bit surprised it hasn't had a proper re-release yet. Um, I mean, Trypticon was re-released, uh, Metroplex was re-released, they're re-releasing Fortress Maximus, so logically Scorpionock will be the next one after that. Um, so I'm a bit surprised it hasn't had one yet, because it feels like it could do with one, and there's so many incomplete versions out there, you kind of think it needs one. Definitely pick it up. But do be prepared to spend a lot of money getting one, especially with all the kibble on it. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave any comments below, click on the other clips, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Goodbye.